Alright guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week we're going to work on the body and driver for the comical grasshopper. We're at step 26, the driver and the light pods. Now it's worth noting at this stage of most builds I tend to go a little bit away from what the manual says. What with waiting for paint to dry, glue and all that, things tend to overlap. So I'm getting on with something and not just waiting around all the time. Anyway, the first half of step 26 is the driver. So we're going to need A3 and A4, the head slash helmet, and A2, the body. Then we have M3 and M4 for the mount. For screws, there's an M3 by 15, a 3 by 10 self tapper, two 3 by 20 countersunk self tappers, and an M3 plain nut. At the base of the helmet, there's a hex shaped hole for the nut to sit in. When we offer up the other half, it's going to trap the nut. And from the back, we screw in the 3 by 10 to clamp it all together. Next on the body, we sit the M3 part on the neck so the tab with the two holes faces downwards and pop in the M3 by 15. Offer up the helmet and tighten up the screw. Don't go too tight though, you're squeezing a fairly thin bit of plastic on the bottom of the helmet. Lastly, the M4 mount sits under M2 with the two holes lining up and we screw in the two countersunk screws. Nip them up and that's the driver put together. Now he's going to end up sitting on top of the battery slot on the chassis, but first he needs some paint. And I'm really not at all happy with that line around the helmet where the two halves come together. Plus there's a big hole in the back of the helmet and there's a hole in his left arm, which really isn't great. We're going to dismantle the driver again, removing the mount and helmet, but we'll only loosen the screw that holds the helmet together. So we've got a solid part, we're going to use some plasti weld to make it essentially one piece. With the pressure off the two halves, we can apply a few drops along the join. It'll find its way around by itself after that. So all we need to do is gently tighten the screw back up, but remember this time the plastic will be soft, so we don't want to overdo it. We just want to make sure the two halves are nice and even. While that hardens up a bit, we will fill the hole in the arm. Wherever possible, it's a good idea to try and use the parts tree to fill holes. It's guaranteed to be compatible. All you need to do is find a bit that fits, pop it in and add a bit more plasti weld. For the back of the helmet, it's going to be a bit more tricky as there isn't anything left that's a good fit. Some styrene rod of just the right size would be good, but we're just going to stuff it with some smaller bits cut off the parts tree. The idea is we want to pack the hole starting with the larger rods, then filling the gaps with some small offcuts until it's pretty well plugged. You're not going to completely fill it at this stage, just try and plug all the big holes. Add some plasti weld and put it off to one side to harden up. Next we're going to start on the body shell. Now it's your typical polycarbonate vac form body with a large skirt that's going to need to get trimmed off. With it being transparent, it's not the easiest to see where you're supposed to be cutting. So before we go near it with anything sharp, we're going to trace along the cut lines with a small permanent marker. That way we can make sure we're not going to start cutting where we shouldn't be. Behind the body, we also have the extra reinforcing piece and the two lenses for the lights, all of which are going to need to be cut out. Now, I tend to start with a rough cut, staying well clear of the lines to separate all the parts, and to make the body a bit more flexible to make the trimming easier. For the long straights, I use a large pair of scissors, and for the more intricate bits, a small pair of scissors. For really tight bits, you can score and snap the plastic too. Thankfully, there isn't anything on this shell that you really need to use that technique on. We're still waiting for the plasti weld to harden up, so let's put together the light pods and dry fit to the chassis. We need from an unmarked bag two 3x10 self tappers, four 2x12 self tappers, two M3 washers, two black O rings, six body clips, and some rubber tube. For now, we're just going to deal with the fixings and the light pods and deal with the tube later. For plastic, there's two L8s and two L9s that make up the pods, and the two lenses we cut from the body moulding. The lenses should fit in the slots in the pods. The lenses have a flat top and a bottom, so they slide in. 
However, because the line we follow to cut the lenses is pretty wide, they don't quite fit. Some gentle sanding is all it's going to take. Just keep in mind you can't add back the plastic, so sand them down a little bit at a time and test fit until the pod goes together. At some point we will fit some LEDs too, but for now we'll just leave them unlit. There's no glue, so they're going to be easy to add. The pods are held together with the 2mm self-tappers, two each. Thread them in, do them up, and then they're complete. To fit to the body, we use the M3 self-tappers with a washer under the head, followed by an O-ring. The idea being, when we do up the screws, the pods can still move around a bit so they don't crack the plastic. A stubby handle screwdriver might be handy for these, as otherwise they're a bit tricky to get at. But the plastic is flexible, so as long as you're careful, a long screwdriver still works. At the back of the body, there's this reinforcing part that ends up being attached with some double-sided tape. But we're going to wait until it's all painted before we stick it on. But we can still include it with the dry build. To mount the body, it's all fairly typical, except at the front, it rests on the rubber tube we put to one side. A bit odd, but I'm sure it'll do the job just fine. The manual has an actual size diagram to cut the tube to length, or you can use a ruler or vernier and cut to 30mm lengths. Just try and get the ends nice and straight. Then we slide them over the front body posts all the way to the bottom. At the rear, the body rests on body clips, which needs to be popped into the right hole in the body to sit nicely. Counting from the top, it's the seventh hole down on both sides. You'll soon know if you've got the wrong ones, as the body just won't sit right. Next, the reinforcing bit goes on, followed by the body. Very nice. Now, when we come to fit the driver and electronics, we can get a feel for the fits and clearances, since we can see right through. Right, back to the driver. The plastic is nice and solid now, so we can trim and shape the bits that we added as filler. A Dremel works well at this stage, just to get the rough shape. The arm is a bit tricky with the folds in the suit, but be gentle and don't go too deep on your first pass, and it should turn out well enough. In any case, it doesn't really matter how it ends up, it's going to look a lot better than the big holes that were there before. Looking at the back of the helmet, it's not dreadful, but there's still some holes. Some model plastic filler would work a treat, but it does seem a bit overkill to open up a tube just for those small holes. Not to worry though, because we can make our own. We're going to need something to mix it up on, preferably something disposable. Aluminium foil does the job okay. Then we take a load of parts tree cutoffs and sand them down with some coarse sandpaper, or in this case a sanding block so we've got a nice pile of plastic dust. You're going to need quite a lot more than you think you're going to, so sand down a good few inches of the sprue. Next we add a few drops of Plasti Weld and mix it all up using something non-plastic like a bamboo cocktail stick. You have to be pretty quick, as it's not going to stay soft for long. When you've got a good paste, add it to the back of the helmet, pressing it into the holes, covering up the rough surface, and as soon as it starts to get a bit stringy, stop and leave it to harden. Next, the plan was to prep and start painting, but due to a close encounter with a deer, I've had some repairs to do on my full-size car this week, so I'm going to have to cut this one a bit short. I hope you liked the video anyway, if you did hit the like button, of course subscribe if you haven't and leave a comment if there's something on your mind. Bye guys!